Hey there. Today we're excited to be talking about how we at Cloudworks are streamlining customer success by delivering them the power of Microsoft integration. Build ESB is one of our key areas of development, and we deliver a robust and seamless integration of various systems, applications, and data sources so that we're able to significantly boost the customer's operational efficiency and provide them with a quick and secure framework of connected systems. For today's agenda, we first want to be talking about integration practice here at Cloudworks. Then we're going to be talking about one of our key customers and their key business challenges. Next, we're going to look at our integration approach that we follow to solve those business challenges. And lastly, we're going to be diving into a demo of what we built for the customer on MuleSoft. Hello, I'm excited to share the remarkable growth story of our integration practice here at Cloudworks. Since our inception in June 2021, our integration practice has been a success story, growing quite rapidly. We've achieved an impressive 40% growth in our team over the past year, which has been a clear indicator for both demand for our services and client trust. As a result, our team now consists of 15 full-time resources, which include certified architects, devs, devs, tech leads, spread across Australia and India. This unique model ensures around-the-clock support and diverse skill sets. We've successfully completed over 25 projects, ranging from SaaS integrations to CRM and ERP integrations, with each project telling a story of innovation and problem solving. And as a result, our team had the opportunity to integrate with various systems and services, showcasing our adaptability and expertise in handling diverse complexities. We've deployed over 250 integration flows and APIs across projects, representing a seamless connection and transformative solutions for our clients. Number of these APIs have been built across various different integration patterns, which again shows our versatility in tra tailoring solutions to diverse integration needs. And finally, we're proud to have served clients across various different industries from small, mid, and large enterprise services. The diversity highlights our expertise in tailoring solutions to specific industry needs. As we celebrate these achievements, we also look forward to more exciting challenges and most importantly, meeting and exceeding a client's desired outcomes. So speaking about the client, they're a leading professional association and a member services organization in Australia are representing the ICT sector, which is the information and communication technology sector in Australia. The primary goal is to provide their end consumers the opportunities for professional development through different certification programs, different platforms for networking, et cetera, so that the ICT professionals in Australia are able to grow um, and they foster the growth of the ICT sector overall in Australia. Uh, they have a big community of close to 47,000 active members um, who are dedicated to powering the positive change through the use of technology. They have a library of 55,000 digital resources and learning accelerators, uh, which the ICT professionals can use to upskill. They've hosted close to 600 professional events, which provide opportunities for the ICT professionals to network with other members or prospective employers. And they have 7,000 professional year graduates, which have received practical job skills and training essential for the ICT uh, market in Australia. Now, the key business challenges that the organization faces, they stemmed out of uh, the disconnected systems that they have. The end consumer facing application is not very well connected with the backend system, the CRM, where the cases are managed. Similarly, the same application is not connected with any third party systems, for example, the identity management, identity verification, and different communication channels. So, this uh, results in multiple challenges the organization faces. The first challenge is lack of clear communication, information, and guidance for the end consumer. They are not properly guided on uh, how to submit an application, how to submit a case, and as a result, they often end up in submitting insufficient or incorrect information on the application. And after they submit the application, they don't have any visibility on the progress of the application, which further builds up anxiety for them. So the second challenge is around delayed outcomes. Um, there are longer wait times for the customer due to a manual task overhead for the CRM team, and as a result, their outcomes are delayed. Third, the current system landscape or the current system architecture is slow, unreliable, and insecure. There are single points of failure, um, which causes more than 50% business downtime for the organization. And there are APIs which are deployed publicly with no secure authentication and authorization protocols. 
And lastly, there's a major problem with duplicate and redundant data due to the systems not connected and absence of any validations or data checks. The end consumers often end up creating duplicate accounts in the CRM, which leads to data issues and they are not able to trace their past uh, cases which they submitted with the, to the organization. And now with the integration delivery approach. This was a multi-vendor partnership with Cloudworks leading the design and architecture and development of core services. We collaborated quite heavily with various stakeholders and external partners, such as the digital partner, the UI UX partners, and other technical vendors. Working in harmony and collaborating at speed was absolutely pivotal in addressing the large scope of work and ensuring all dependencies are timely addressed. We started by carefully understanding the client's current system landscape and processes, the challenges they were facing and the business outcomes they were looking to achieve. We developed the as is and the to be state views to understand the target view. Once they were identified, we developed a comprehensive integration inventory and manifest, calling out all integration use cases. We collaborated with digital and UX team to understand the front end design and how the APIs would be invoked. We played a huge role in defining the contracts. Mocking service, prototyping, feedback were crucial for all teams to operate at speed. As part of the integration design, we started developing high-level architecture views. We set up the platform with Cloud of 2.0. We designed key foundational services such as logging and exception handling framework. Detailed integration requirements, user stories, epics, acceptance criteria, wall captured and linked to the functional requirement, providing a complete requirement traceability view. As part of the solution design, we deep dive into the lower level design, capturing application interactions, the orchestration logic, validation, routing logic, and data mapping. We further adapted various integration patterns for sync and async processing for data synchronization based on use case, with strong exception handling at its core. Extra emphasis was added on security framework given the nature of program and integration with public facing portal. The API implementation was continuously optimized and thoroughly verified to ensure all SLAs were met and ensuring a great end user experience. The result was over 20 low level architecture views for all integration use cases, including integration with external systems and the data flow from the front end screens to downstream systems. Over 50 experience APIs were developed for the consumers. Five systems were integrated and eight applications were developed. Design was done with future scalability in mind, and as a result, number of reusable assets were created, which have already been identified for the next program of work. And now we jump right to the demo. To start over with, this is the sign-in screen. So whenever an applicant lands on the website, if they're not already logged in, we ask them to log in so that each step of their application process can be easily tracked against their account. And if they drop at any point in the journey, we can resume their application from where they left off when they log back in. Um, here, I do not currently have an account, so I'll sign up for one. Yep, so I'll have to provide the basic details for sign up, like my email address, I'll have to set up a password, my name, and my phone number. So here I provided my details, um, and I've verified my email ID as well. Once I provide that and I click on create, the MuleSoft API at this point will register an account for me in the identity provider and generate a unique ID, which is specific to my registration. This solves the problem of account data duplication at this point itself, uh, as now we are going to be validating that the same applicant with the same details is not able to create our duplicate accounts in the system. And it's more feasible for them to be able to track all their cases and other activities under one account only. Yep. So once I've done the sign up, I'm logged in. Um, now I'll be uh, on the applicant dashboard. So once I've signed up, I will land on this dashboard right over here. This is where I'll complete the entire application process, which is divided into specific sections, as you can see. Now, one thing to note here, the front end is completely stateless. So the section completion validations and dynamically enabling or disabling the sections is driven purely based on the logic that is entirely built on MuleSoft. So MuleSoft will update the completion flags for each section as you move uh, forward, allowing for a more guided experience for the end user and ensuring that the correct data is input at each stage of the application. Now here, the very first process is verifying your ID. Um, in the previous system, it was all manual and the backend team would ask the consumer to manually upload uh, 
uh, PDF documents of their IDs uh, for them to review in the backend. But now we've integrated the system with an identity verification tool to automate the entire ID verification process to reduce the manual workload for the case management team uh, in the backend. So I'll now start the process from ID verification by clicking on that section. That brings me to this screen where I can see what documents I require in order to verify my ID. In order to begin, I'll click on generate QR code button. When I generate this QR code, behind the scenes, MuleSoft initiates a transaction with the identity verification tool and returns a unique transaction ID. So this is the transaction ID against which all the ID verification section and the extracted data will now be mapped by MuleSoft under that applicant account in Salesforce. The applicant will scan the QR code using their smartphone and complete the process on the phone itself, and they will be taken to the identity verification tool portal. Once they finish the process, the extracted details from their primary and secondary ID, uh, along with the verification status of their transaction, will be updated by MuleSoft in real time in Salesforce. Now, once my ID verification is completed, I'll be shown this window where I can see the verification status. In this case, it's successful, and the extracted full name from my price, uh, from the primary document I used for verification. This data is fetched in real time um, from Salesforce uh, by MuleSoft using the transaction ID created earlier for that session. Now that my identity verification process is completed, I can see a green tick against the section name. This is again MuleSoft Get API bringing the relevant completion flags in real time from Salesforce and displaying to the end user in the front end. Um, the next section, that is the personal details section, is also enabled as uh, well for me to complete. On the personal details page, few of the details will be pre-populated by MuleSoft, as you can see there, based on the extracted data from the ID verification. And the rest details like the address, the country, etc., will be filled out by the end user. Uh, once I fill that out and I click on Save and Continue, these details will be saved on the account record in Salesforce using the Mule Post API. Now, once my personal details section is completed, the next step is to make the payment for the application, and that section is enabled as well. And when I click on the payment section, I have two options to choose from. Uh, I can pay using PayPal or a credit or debit card. Um, here, I'm going to be using a credit card to make the payment. Um, and I've entered my card number, the name on the card, the expiration date, and CVV. Once this payment gets through successfully, um, MuleSoft will create a charge and order in Salesforce, which captures all the payment details and will also update the payment status flag in Salesforce and mark it as completed. On the dashboard, the user can now see the subsections enabled in the complete your application section. And as you can see, the review section is not yet enabled as I haven't completed all the enabled subsections yet. Again, as I mentioned before, this is all driven by the MuleSoft APIs as the front end is completely stateless. And Mule uh, APIs are taking care of keeping the data entry sequential uh, in the correct order of the sections for the user to import. Now, in the interest of time for this session, out of the four sections mentioned in the complete your application section, we'll look at only the two primary ones, which are qualifications and experiences. So I click on the qualification section, which will bring me to this window. So here, um, I'll have to provide all my qualification details, like the title of the qualification, the university name, um, et cetera, and the evidence documents, which are required in support of that qualification. So here I have all the details filled out and I've uploaded a degree document PDFs as well. Uh, and now I'll click on complete qualification for MuleSoft to store this qualification record along with the uploaded documents uh, under the application record in Salesforce. So here, every time a qualification record will be saved or submitted by the user, um, they'll reach back on this qualification history page where they'll see a card associated to that qualification they just uh, saved or submitted. So they'll have a consolidated view of all the information they provided till that point uh, for the qualification section in that application. And we have MuleSoft APIs rendering this page with all the qualification records that are present under that application record for that user in Salesforce. Once I've added all the qualifications, I'll click on the complete section button here to mark the entire qualification section of the application as completed. Now, as we've seen for those sections as well, the qualification section is also shown with a green tick once it's marked as completed by the user. Um, now we'll add an experience episode as well. For that, we'll click on the experience section. After clicking on that section, I'll reach this page where I'll provide all the details of my experience, like the nature of my employment, the name of my employer, my role in that employment, etc. 
in the evidence documents in support of that experience episode. So here I have all the details filled out for this experience episode uh, and I've uploaded uh, an experience letter as well along with the payslip documents. I'll now click on complete experience so that MuleSoft is able to store this experience record along with the uploaded documents uh, under my uh, application record in Salesforce. So just like we saw for qualification, uh, every time an experience record will be added, uh, the user will be brought back to this work experience history page where uh, they'll see a card associated to it, uh, to that experience that they just added on this work experience history page uh, to have a consolidated view of all the experiences they've added so far. Once all experiences are added, I'll click on complete section to mark the entire experience section completed uh, for my application. Now, now onto the final section, which is the review application. Um, you notice how it's now enabled when all the previous sections uh, have been completed by the user. Once I click on the review application, on my left, I'll see this page where I have a glance of the information I've submitted so far. So the qualification, I've added one qualification here. I'll also be able to view the document that I uploaded for that qualification. And I can see an experience. I've added one experience episode. I'll be able to read the details as well as the document that I've uploaded for the experience episode. Uh, we also have respective edit buttons for each entry. So if I uh, made an error, I can click on edit and uh, edit that uh, record. And MuleSoft is going to observe that record in Salesforce. So here, without making any changes, I click on Submit Application. Once I click on it, uh, I'll be given a pop-up that I want to submit my application or not. If I click on Submit Application. Now, we have integrated with an applicant verification tool as well. So uh, we ask them to provide the visa details so they're able to verify uh, if they hold a valid visa. Um, and if they do if the integration does not bring up any data, we ask the applicant to manually provide the data so that their application can be accordingly accessed. So here uh, I can see um, the user has to provide the visa grant number and visa expiry date. And these details will be stored on the application record um, by MuleSoft. So here, for now, I'll click on skip visa details. And now my application is submitted. Once my application gets submitted, I'll reach on this tracker where I'll be able to view my application number. And as the application progresses, I'll be able to view different updates on my application. So you see how we currently it's submitted. And in the latest updates, I can see that the application was submitted on this end state. And now it's worked for pre-screening. And as mentioned before, the all the data in the tracker that we see here is driven by MuleSoft Get APIs. And it's bringing the data from um, different records in Salesforce and displaying the information uh, of the progress of the application to the, to the end user. Now, at various stages of the application, the applicant will receive inbox messages so they are notified of the payment, uh, application submission, document request, or their outcome. This is facilitated by MuleSoft bringing the message data from Salesforce right to the front end and, any, and posting back any relevant call to action data back to Salesforce. Here we see an example of a document request being made from a case manager in the backend for this person's applications. And that request has popped up in the form of an inbox message for that user to respond uh, from the applicant dashboard. They click on this upload here button to upload the required document. Uh, and then we'll sort of add that document back to Salesforce under that specific entity and the qualification or experience for which the document was requested under the user application in Salesforce. Once the user's outcome is finalized, uh, the tracker would here move to the last stage that is outcome sent, and they'll be able to view all the relevant updates on the ap application throughout its journey from submission to closure. They'll also be able to view the status, the submission date of the application, and the outcome when the outcome was finalized. So here are the entire application process, right from the applicant sign up to their application closure is facilitated by MuleSoft and MuleSoft is integrated with the backend CRM system, which is Salesforce, where the case is managed and other third-party systems like identity provider, identity verification and applicant verification tools.